What is up? What is going on, everybody? I am back with another Mariners post game recap. Um, before I get started, as always, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button. I'm about 59% of my views are from non subscribers. So, again, if you're just kind of casually watching and you're enjoying these, helps me out a lot if you can hit that subscribe button. Uh, and thank you to everybody that comments, hits the like button. Truly appreciate it. Thank you guys again for all of the love and support. Speaking of love and support, let's talk about the team that we love and support. The Seattle Mariners fall 9-4 to to the Angels. They lose the series. Um, they finish up an awful road trip, and they fall to 31-33 and in the season. It's time to have a little conversation about this team, and I feel like we're doing this every night now, and I kind of feel like eventually this is just, I, I'm going to be talking on deaf ears here because it's going to be the same stuff um, almost every night. And I talked about this series needing to be need to be a series they won. They need to go out and win this thing to, to get back to 500, to have a little momentum going home, and to show that they can win a series against a team that is above 500. Um, they played really well last night. They didn't play too bad on Friday. Um, and then an absolute egg laid today. And, and it's all around today. I, I have frustrations um, in a lot of different departments for this team today. Um and it's just not good enough right now. This is this is a pretty mediocre baseball team. Uh, listen, there's 98 games left. Certainly time. Certainly is time to turn it around. Am I giving up on the season? I am not. But every point of evidence we see right now from this team, it's really mediocre. Their run differential is mediocre. Their record's mediocre. Their performance is mediocre. I mean, it's been bad recently, but overall, it's mediocre. Um Let's dive into it. Let's talk a little bit about what this team needs to do here. Logan Gilbert was terrible. You know, no other way around it. And I'm getting kind of tired of it with Logan and Kirby, too. This rotation of great starts and then garbage. Where's the middle ground? I'm not asking Logan to be as good as he was in San Diego every time out. It doesn't have to be seven innings of Warner and Run. But can these guys go like five and two thirds and give up three? Would that be so much to ask? Is that so hard? I mean, it's very difficult, but is it too much to ask um, to do that? Because it's just it's just rotating good and bad starts here. Logan goes three innings, six earned runs, eight hits, no walks, two Ks. The expected batting average against Logan today was like 500. He was awful. He was getting hit around really hard. I still like Logan Gilbert. I think he's going to be fine. I don't have a lot of concerns. But that's been one of the problems here. The pitching recently has just fallen off. And like I said, Logan and George, just this weird thing where they're dominant and then they're just getting smacked around. There has to be a middle ground. There's got to be something where you can go six innings and give up four runs. Castillo start on Friday. And if Logan would have done that, six innings, five earned runs, now obviously it would have been enough, but like maybe this team does rally. Maybe they do win this baseball game. But it's just all or nothing. It's all or nothing. The offense had some good at-bats, very similar to Friday, where they grinded out. They did score some runs, but they're still not getting that big hit. They're still leaving a lot of guys on base, and they're still leaving a lot out there. I don't expect teams to put up 10, 11 runs every night. I'm not saying this team needed to score 9 and that them not getting 9 is unacceptable here in a 9-4 loss. But again, that sixth inning, they load up the bases with nobody out down Seven to three, and they get one run. Cal has a bad at bat, almost bloops one in, but it's a was not a very good at bat. Geno sack fly to his credit was hit pretty deep. Um, it could have been a home run in a few parks, and then Caballero um, strikes out or, or flies out, and it's just it's just not acceptable. In the seventh inning, they get a couple guys on. And, and I not want to pick on Teos Hernandez because he was fantastic today, but he just watches pitches go right by for a strikeout with runners on. Julio grounds into two double plays today. Um, you know, like I said, was overall the offense poor? Did they not really? The offense certainly wasn't the problem when you're giving up nine runs, but just still not getting that big hit that they need. They're still not just very similar to Friday. They did some good things. It's been better from the offense, but they're still not... They've gone from here to here, but you got to get to here. Um, you you got to finish it off and get those big hits. This was a winnable game. Despite dropping down 6 to nothing. this team battled and had a chance to maybe win this baseball game. But some poor at-bats and clutch situations, some 
double plays by players that should be better than that. Um, and then L Logan's performance, just all put together, leads to this. And truthfully, a perfect summation of this road trip. This team probably didn't deserve to come out of this road trip 500 because they were so bad on this road trip. This is what you get. You know, had they won and been 500, we would have probably been going, I, I would have, I would be like, hey, they won the last series. I even talked about it in my video last night, how it would leave a good taste going into our mouth, despite, you know, good taste in our mouth. Yeah, that, that's, yeah, that's a saying, right? It sounded weird when I said it. Um, you know, despite the sweep in Texas and some of the blowouts, you're coming home 500. But this team didn't deserve to come home 500 with the way they played on this road trip. Uh, they have earned every loss they have gotten. Um, the pitching has fallen apart. The hitting is getting a little better, but it's still not great. And if the pitching is going to be like this, which it, the pitching staff is better than what we've seen on the road trip, but they're not going to be capable of scoring 11, 12 runs. It's not, it's not going to be something this offense is going to do. So just massive frustrations all around. Just a bad road trip overall. Not only was it two and six, it was an ugly two and six. One of the reasons I've defended this team throughout the season you guys can go back and watch my videos, and some of the people that I know watch every day can attest to that, that I've been very, um, you know, not upbeat necessarily, but very forgiving of some of the losses, is for a while there, the Mariners were kind of sitting at two or three games over 500, 500 a game under, but their run differential is like plus 27, plus 28. Some of their losses were really close. They were 4-12 and 12 in one-run games at one point. So it looked like things that were not very sustainable. I thought this team could get back to 500 in one-run games. The pitching had been amazing. There's too much talent on this offense to be not good for that long. Um, and the run diff was pretty good. It was a decent team that was kind of was here that was playing here. Well, now the team's performance has just dropped to here. Now the run differential max matches the record. Now they're getting blown out. I mean, on this road trip, two blowouts against the, the Rangers – one against the Padres, and then one here against the Angels, a little bit closer today, but that's not saying a whole heck of a lot. And then before this series, blown out twice against the Yankees. The one game they win, they squeak out a one to nothing win. Um, and even the, the last few wins haven't been overly impressive. Yesterday was a nice win. Yesterday was. The first game in San Diego, Logan was amazing, but it was still a win that they sort of just sputter to. They're not putting themselves even in positions to win games. I thought they were early in the year. I thought they were. They were kind of putting themselves in positions, positioned to win games, and they just weren't pulling it out. Now, they are just getting their, the, the, just getting beat. They're just getting beat up by teams that look better than them. This does not look like a playoff baseball team right now. Do I think they're out of it? I don't, there's what, are they going to be six games back of a playoff spot? That's a lot. And they're behind a lot of teams and a lot of teams that just look better than them right now. They've got work to do. They've got a good Marlins team coming in this week. Um, and just, this looks like a mediocre baseball team. It does. Now, we said that last year, and they ended up rallying and getting it in. So it's not done yet. I will say the AL was a little weaker last year. There was less teams I think they had to climb, less work they had to do. It feels like they got to do a little more work this year. Now, I don't think they need a 14-game winning streak. I still think you can win six out of seven, but what are we getting at now? This team isn't showing that ability. Like, you got to win a series. Like, they can't even do that. It's just, this team just can't, it's one win, it's one half a step forward. I wouldn't even say yesterday was a step forward. It's half a step forward, and then just two steps right on back. It's It's been that way for a while now. Outside of the sweep against the A's and that series win against the Pirates, um, those two series, other than that, it's been a mess. It's just been like this all year. They I, I mean, I, what, their longest win streak and loose, losing streak's got to be like three or four both ways. You know what I mean? I know it's something like that. It's just so inconsistent. It, they're so inconsistent, they're consistent. Their consistency is their inconsistency um, with this team. And, and it's frustrating all up and down. More base running errors today. I didn't talk about that yesterday um, because they won, and I just kind of forgot about it. Ty France gets picked off in the first. What What on earth is Ty France doing even getting a lead? He should be standing like a six-year-old where they're like their feet are on top of the bases. You know what I'm talking about when little kids play baseball? He's slow as molasses. He isn't scoring on a two-out double anyways. How many two-out doubles has Ty been standing at third when he's at first? Because he's slow. I like Ty. Ty had a really nice game. He was three for three. I, I, I'm not trying to pick on him, but like... How is Ty France getting picked off? Like, 
Julio and Kelnick getting picked off is frustrating, but you can kind of understand with two outs, they're maybe thinking about stealing, trying to get a guy in scoring position with two outs for where a base hit makes this one to nothing. You can get it a little bit. They were almost picked off a couple other times as well. And then yesterday, some more base running errors. Um, and they almost had one more Kelnick overslid the bag and was lucky he got back. Now, I won't really call that a base running gaff. That's more of just guy overran the bag. Is that on coaching? Like, like, is this pickoff stuff on the coaches? I don't know. Um, you know, it's tough at the major league level. This isn't high school where you're going to be like, I'm sitting you for a week for that. What are you going to do, bench tie France? I mean, who's one of the guys today that had a really nice game? So you're kind of put in a tough spot as a manager um, how to handle that. But just some more stupid baseball from this team that's played some stupid baseball all season long. Um, you know, Guys that they need to have big performances, not giving them big performances. Nice job by Teoscar. Um, he seems to be coming out of it. A two-run home run today, three hits. I just talked about how he's going to be streaky, and he's in one of those hot streaks right now. But the team's not doing anything with it. They're still losing. Um, and then even Teo, as great as his game was, and this is just the frustration with losing, that at bat in the seventh inning, I think he saw five pitches. He just looked at all of them, and he was out. He was tying run. I mean, where's the big game from someone here? Like, JP leads off the seventh inning. That's seventh inning. Let's go back to the seventh inning that I'm talking about with the Teo at bat. Let's go back to the beginning of the inning, I should say. JP, leadoff single, solid. Julio grounds into a double play. Uh, like, And then Ty singles and Kellenick works a walk. I mean, if Julio just can hit a fly ball there for a normal out, you have the bases loaded there. You know, and I don't know if they win the game or anything, but just little things like that. Julio grounds into a double play to end the game. And I'm kind of tired of it. Like, it's just, you know, all the little things are, are frustrating right now. And I, I don't know. I don't know where it's, you know, I don't know what they need to do here necessarily. I'm going to get into that a little bit. Um, but just frustrating all around for this team. Um, I had another point I was going to make, and it slipped my mind. I get into other rants, and I forget. Um what I was going to say, but this is a bad road trip. This is not acceptable. Oh, and then uh looks like Penn Murphy might have gotten hurt as well. Um, he had that shoulder elbow strain, and as soon as he threw a pitch, he looked over the dugout and kind of went like, which is concerning. Anytime a player is like, yep, something happened, not good news. So I hope all the best for Penn and that he is okay um, and can make a comeback, but I would guess he will be back on um, the injured list tomorrow. So would be shocked if Matt Festa is right back in there. Do I think that's going to make or break a team? No, but just just sucks for Penn um, to see him come back and then get hurt again. So the Bears come home tomorrow after this road trip, and I think you need to make a couple statements. I, I, I think you need to say make some things just unacceptable right now. Um, and I, I don't know. Some of that might be getting rid of a couple guys. I think it's time to move on from Chris Flexen and Colton Wong. I think it's time. And maybe it sends a little message about some of this just being unacceptable. Now, do I think getting rid of Chris Flexen and Colton Wong is going to change anything? No, not in the short term at least. It's not going to make much difference. Colton Wong's already kind of lost his job. And Flexen's pitched in such low leverage situations that it really won't matter. But um, one of my subs, uh, Char65, I hope I said that right, um, made a great point. He's like, what's the point of having Flexen around if he's just, you know, for a long man, if he's given up the four or five runs, kind of defeats the purpose to keep you in the game. And that was even today. Like, do I think they would have won this game? Probably not. But Flexen gives up two runs and it's just, it goes from maybe there's a chance to just, it's over. There's no chance now. It's time to move on. He he doesn't have it. I, I don't even care if he does rebound. I don't care if Colton Wong goes somewhere and succeeds. When I say I don't care, I don't mean for them personally. I wish those guys the best, and I hope they have success. I just mean in terms of how I view that for the Mariners. I don't care. Time to move on. Statements need to be made. Like, it, th this is not acceptable baseball. There's too much talent on this team to be to be letting up like this. Logan's outing today, not acceptable. Cal Raleigh's performance today and on this road trip, unacceptable. Julio's game today, unacceptable. You know, it, it, it's, it's all across the board here. Um, now, I'm not talking about, like, benching these guys. You can't really do that. But just, I don't know. It's just, it's it, it's super frustrating. Um, you know, I, I I don't know what else you can do. And 
In terms of adding the roster, I don't know if you're buyers right now at the deadline. Truthfully, um, I might look at this team more as a seller at the moment. And we'll get into that in some other videos. Um, all the talk about what the Mariners can add. They might be selling. They might be, might be trading away pieces. I don't think you go too crazy. I'm not talking about trading Julio, trading Kirby, trading Logan, stuff like that. Um, your cornerstone pieces. Uh, because I do think this is a talented team that even if this year isn't the year, I do think with some additions it can bounce back next year. But some of the bullpen guys, uh, you know, maybe Seawald, if Gott was healthy, Gott, um, you know, um, you know, Teoscar, you know, guys like that, you know, you, you got to look at it. Maybe you do um, have something there that you can yeah, trade off. But we'll get into that in another video. Um I, I thought today was a must win. I did. I thought they really needed this game. It kind of would have masked a bad road trip. Um, and I talked about that a little bit yesterday. At least would have given like, yeah, this road trip wasn't good. I'm not sure I'm holding so many different pens and pencils. I always have like a comfort thing having something in my hand. But, um, you know, it would have kind of masked it, gotten it back to 500. You finish off with a series win. You would have felt, okay. Would you said the road trip was success? No. But going back 500, a chance to get back over tomorrow, and, and you would have felt kind of like, uh, uh, okay, I can, I can take where this team's at right now. But like I said, kind of fitting that they lost it because the road trip was so bad. I don't think they deserved to come out of this with the series win um, with how poorly they played. And you got a good Marlins team coming in tomorrow that's uh, not going to be a pushover by any means. It's going to be a very tough series. You do miss Alcantara, but Alcantara hasn't even been that great this year uh, for the Marlins. So... You know, maybe that's not necessarily a great thing there. So this team's got to find a way. that They've got to do some damage. It's time. Uh, I said it for this series. They didn't do it. They need to sweep Miami. Like, and I'm not, that's not saying that Miami's not good. Miami's a good team. But you need to start beating some good baseball teams. You're going to run out of time. I've said that before on this road trip. It's time for this team to start making some statements and start playing good baseball and start beating some good teams. You don't get to play Oakland that many times. Truthfully, Oakland's looked better than the Mariners the last few days. Um, but you don't just get to rest on that. This team has got to got to go out there and, and do some things. I'm done giving them the passes on this. And I did it. I did early on. I was like, hey, listen, you know, it's a tough series. This would have been one. If this series was in April, I would have shrugged it off. Like, hey, Friday was a kind of a coin flip game. Yesterday was a nice win. Today was a tough loss. Move on. It was on the road. No more. No more. Now, do I think they're going to win every series the rest of the way? Of course not. But this just is not acceptable anymore. And regardless of anything else, regardless of like good at-bats or outings with low FIP, but a lot of earned runs, it doesn't matter anymore. Now you've got to get down to brass tacks and get results. That doesn't mean FIP doesn't matter and stuff like that. It still does. The better your FIP, the better probably your results are going to be. But you guys know what I'm talking about. It's results-based analysis now. And it's time to buckle down and get wins. You need to win baseball games. I don't really care so much about, like, oh, I worked the count pretty well. No, like in the sixth inning, Cal's little pop-out, not acceptable. He needs to drive a ball into the gap there and get a couple runs home. Uh, the only guy I'll give a little bit of a pass to in that sixth inning is Gino because that fly ball was pretty close. It was out in front of it a little bit, but there were some parks that would have gone out at. In fact, in Seattle, that would have been a home run. I'll give him a little bit of a pass. But, like, you know, everybody else had sixth inning. No, in the seventh inning, like, Julio does not get it. That, that was a terrible at bat. I don't care if it was decent pitch to hit or whatever or a great pitch. I don't care anymore. It was a bad at bat. Tails at bat in the seventh was a terrible at bat. Tail was great today. But one more. We needed one more. And nobody can seem to get that one more from this team right now. Um, so hopefully they can bounce back tomorrow. Uh, time's... It's not that time's running short. There's 98 games to go, but they're dipping in the standings. And I said this on Friday. You know, yeah, there's 98 left, but I, and I've been very prudent in that. I've said there's, hey, there's 115 left, 114, but now there's 98. Tomorrow there's 97. Then there's going to be 82. Then there's going to be 66. Then there's 31. Then there's 19, and you're 15 games to go, and you're six games back. If they're going to play like this, it's not going to matter how many games you have left. It's just going to be more, more mediocre baseball. Do I think this team can come out of it? Yeah. I think the pitching is still really good. Very encouraged by Brian Wu last night. I think Logan's going to be fine. But him and Kirby have got to find a way to stop with this really good than really bad. It, it, it can't happen anymore. Like, 
bad outings happen. I, I'm sympathetic to that, but it's just been a rotation of good, bad, good, bad. Like today, maybe Logan didn't have the great feel for it. Maybe didn't have his best stuff. Maybe he was throwing his bullpens like, man, this just, I did not feel it today. You've got to find a way to battle. And when you have something like that, go five innings, give up three or four runs. That's not a good start. Five innings, four and runs, like an 8.1 ERA. That's not good. But it would have kept them in this game, and it might have just been enough. I talk about all the time how the offense has got to bail out the pitching. Friday, the Mariners' offense needed to bail out Luis Castillo. Couldn't do it. Today, Logan kind of needed to step up for the offense, um, who was battling pretty well, and, and he couldn't do it. And then the offense had a chance to get the big hits, and they couldn't do it. So we'll see. Hopefully they get it done tomorrow. Like I said, I'm not giving up, but it, it's got to turn around here. I said it for this series. They didn't do it. I mean, I, I, again, I'm not going to sit here and say season over, um, but it's got to start. Got to do something. And it can't just be little moral victories. That's out the window. You can't go 1-3 and three against Miami beat them 14-0, and then lose 3-2 to two both games, go, well, you know, if those games were there, as I've kind of done for this team, as I have, as I've stood up for them. Like, like Phil's been stabbed in the heart here, you know what I mean? So, um, But no, they, 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 they've got to just get wins. I don't care how anymore, need Ws, and it's got to start tomorrow. Tomorrow's it, must win. It is. Like, all these games here are must wins, for me at least. Uh, got to find a way to pull it out tomorrow. Bryce Miller needs to be better than he's been his last two starts. So let's hope he can do it. Hit that sub button. Hit the like button. Thank you all for watching all the way. Appreciate your support. Comment. Let me know what you think. You think the season's over? You think there's still hope? Uh, what do you think the team can do? I can tell you, outside of any big trades, there's not a lot they can do right now to get better outside of these guys just being better baseball players. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday and your weekend. I will see you guys all tomorrow night as usual. And as always, go Mariners. Peace.